okay, so you were a cop, went to the 5th, you went to the 17th, you were at, uh, you were in BCO, 3rd Battalion. Yeah. Um, when did you go over to uh, our, was it RRC when you went over or was it, was it still RRD? It was, it was still RRD and at, okay. at, at, I think the, for my first so you're old like me the, then. Yeah. But not as old as you. <laughs> you you were you were the trailblazer in RRD. Um yeah, so I think well, it was Q 2007. and Sean, I mean those guys, yeah. Actually, to be honest, we talk a lot about RRD. The real trailblazers were guys like Paul Ford, um, yeah. Andy yep. Cornelius. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was in. Um I know those two for sure. I, I'm sure I'm missing somebody that I should know, but anyway, so like those guys were in it way back in the day, and then um and then they they restood it up with me and Q and, and Sean. Yep. Um, but then, so, okay, so go ahead. So when did you go over, um, like, when did you yeah, go over two, to RD? Uh, 2007, but, I, but it was that, uh, during that time, I had just healed from my broken back. So I had to get a bunch of waivers and, you know, they wanted to make sure I could get those approved. Yeah. So I got the waivers for the back, the knee and all that stuff. And then I went off to free fall school. Nice. Uh, yep. So right when I got back from free fall school, I got assigned to a team. And that team was actually getting ready to break up and kind of reform. And RRC as a whole was really starting to shape into something a lot more organized at that point. Okay. Um, were, there, so, were there more teams? Were there still three or were there, were there more by then? I, I I don't know. I think there were still only three teams at that time when I went over. Okay. Um, there could have been six. I, I can't be sure. Okay. Yeah. It's a little yeah. hazy for me too. I mean, I was kind of like, I, I tell everybody – I was so heads down at that time. Like, you know, you do your thing, you come back, you live yeah. your life. You know, it's, I wasn't really a lot of more. I mean, I guess I should have been a little more aware of what was happening, but a lot of guys know like everything that happened with that whole, you know, with a whole breakdown of that, where the team, how many teams there were and who was on them and stuff. But yeah. Um, so then uh, when did you do your first deployment with those guys? Yeah. Two, 2008. Okay. 2008. And, uh, I think, I think that was to, yeah, I'm pretty certain that was to Afghanistan. Who was on uh, your team? No. It was to Iraq, excuse me. Uh, okay. So at that time it was uh, Hank, uh, his last name's escaping me. You have Will oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Fred Tolman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I Ray Plasher. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Those are good dudes. Um, there was a couple other guys that, actually ended up going to selection and I think they're still operating. So y'all yeah, won't say their names, but sure, um, sure. So but my but the but the first guys was uh like Dylan Foreman. Yeah. Because I, I was with them I was with them for some training and initially that was what the team makeup was. Dylan Foreman and uh some of those older older guys uh that were, were getting ready to go on and do some other things within that yeah, company. Yeah. So yeah Dylan wasn't he on I think he was on two with Brandy for a while. And then yeah. he, I thought they were on the same team. Yeah, they were. Yeah. They absolutely were. That was awesome. That was crazy. Um, yeah. So I heard a story about like some in 09. There was like you guys got new. And did you were you ambushed or did somebody ambush you? So it's a I did not. I was not initially ambushed. What it, what we were doing at the time. And I I protested this entire mission because yeah. um, we were working for another government agency. Yeah, yeah. And they were doing things that I did not consider worth our time. And right. I thought this is just a lot of driving around, trying to make contact and, and trying to get ourselves in, in a firefight for no reason. Yeah. Um, so this particular mission, I had I had told uh, I had told this other government agency lead. I said, listen, I, I'm going to call my higher up and tell them that this is a waste of time. I don't know why we're driving around for three days you have no clear objective and we're just opening ourselves up to a firefight or an ambush. Um, so I was eventually trumped and they said, you know what, when those guys go out, they got to have a JTAC with them. And then that means the entire team's got to go. Yeah. So we, so we went so on wait, this so you, mission. At that time, the, the OGA, that was a bunch of locals too, right? Is that, was that, you were still doing oh, that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We had yeah, a lot yeah. of locals with us. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's so ton of this, locals, like yeah, yeah, a ton remember. of them. Yeah. We had this massive convoy, yeah. several vehicles, and it is 
boring as all get out. I got oh, yeah. nothing overhead because it's like we can't miles afford. of that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so I, yeah, go, Joe well, I didn't mean, I didn't want to gloss over that point yeah. you were just trying to make that. Yeah. Those convos were so long. It was, it was hard to keep any kind of asset overhead because you were out there for like hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And it's like, nothing's going on. You can't take that away from somebody yeah. else. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, the you know, it's not like we have endless aircraft that just, you know, they got the task force to support. They got the regular army. Like, you know, guys need that. So, right, we're just driving, right? And I'm just hoping I don't have to do my job. Um, <laughs> so, we kind of split the convoy to where there was five minutes of separation. You had like a lead convoy with local nationals. You had two uh, RRC team members embedded with them. And then right. the rest of us were back with the rest of the local nationals. And so there was some separation. And all I remember hearing over SATCOM, it just all of a sudden I heard over SATCOM. Uh, it, it, I learned it was Ray Plaster. He was calling back to the jock and he said, I need Cass. I need Cass right now. And we can just hear gunfire and explosions in the background. Jeez. So, yeah, at that point, we're just like, we got to put the hammer down. We can't communicate with him. We don't right. have line of sight. And it took us a, it took us about 10 minutes to get there. And when we finally Which is like get a lifetime, where, you know, in a firefight. Yeah, it, absolutely a lifetime. So we got there and um, to, to kind of describe the terrain, we drive to uh, the edge of what, of what I would describe as a bowl. Okay. There is this big, big giant, like concave bowl with one house down there. And all I see is pure chaos. I can see our vehicles. They have been shot up, messed up. I don't know where, at this point, I can only assume that our two guys are dead. Yeah. I don't know where they are. I know I have B1 showing up at this time. I got Oof. A10s in route. I got uh, an F15 overhead. But all I have is a B1. Uh, so I started started kind of working. He can't do much for me as far as telling me what's going on. Right. This is a very close contact fight at this point. Did he have any kind of pod or anything to to was he, or was it what was he slick? Yeah, he was. He had a pod and he was able to get on the the only single structure there was. But you got to realize we have local nationals mixing yeah. it up with oh, yeah with guys that look just like they do, <laughs> right? Except for the Afghan flag they have on their you know their their yep. uh, slap patch there on their arm. I don't know who's who. Um, we got the local nationals. They want to go like get into the fight immediately, but we're like, we're trying we'll to make have it worse. Turf, hold them back. We can't make it worse. Um, and then we have the other government agency guys that are there. We don't know what their status is. We right. can see their vehicle. It's shot up really bad. Yes. Um, and then we learned, we learned that there was about 30 Taliban that had ambushed like the first four or five vehicles. So, I think really all told, it was like, it ended up being 30 Taliban against like six of our guys. That's two RRC guys and a couple of the other government agency guys. I So I don't want to say too much other than one of the other government agency guys got killed with his own weapon. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. He lost his weapon and then got shot with his no own way. weapon and killed. Jeez. The... Uh, the other two guys stayed in the vehicle behind the bulletproof glass and armor of the Hilux vehicle. Right. And the two RRC guys, which both of them ended up getting silver stars, rightfully so. I think they, sure. they probably should have got more than that, but they ended up fighting, fighting these guys off to the point where they actually had to retrograde a little bit. And, they were kind of starting to come up behind us by the time we had gotten there. And that was the first time in combat I ever got to use the 40 millimeter thump gun. <laughs> right um, on. Nice. So, yeah. So I just took a, a group of Afghan nationals with me. I'm waiting on assets to show up and that we're just sitting there plinking these guys as they're flanking us. Um, and then we had a bunch more guys come over, set up a good perimeter and we were pretty secure. We still didn't know what the situation was. We were talking uh, we had heard our guys on the radio. So at that point, we knew at least one of them was alive. Yeah. And once I got the B1 on this house, he was really excited to to drop a bomb. And sure. something in my gut just said, 
we can't do it. I do not have positive uh, identification of where all my friendlies are. I can't do it. It's just, so something kept telling me, don't do it. The RRC leader at the time was telling me, let's drop that house, man. Let's drop it. Because we were shooting everything we could into that house yeah. to try to bring it down because they had, they were using that as a hard point um, to put effective fire on, on our guys that were down there. And I told him, I said, listen, I, if our guys are alive, they might be inside that building or they might be on the other side long. And you know, this, to, it's a very long story, but at the end of the day, I decided not to drop. And luckily after we had finally made our way down, our guys were on the backside of that house using it as cover. Man. If I would have put, if I would have put the 2000 pounders in that house, fratricide, both of them probably would have been dead. That's your job. You did your job, man. Yeah, you did the right thing. That, it, it, and, and everybody, everybody was doing the right thing. The B one's like, look, I'm here to drop bombs. I want to yep. drop my bomb. You know, and the team leader was like, look, I'm making a command decision. I think we need to drop that house because we're taking a lot of effective fire from that place. But you, as a JTAC, have to take all that data, figure it all out, and and kind of use your gut too. And you made the right yep. decision, man. You said, yeah, you saved those guys' lives. Man, that's yep. that's awesome. Yep. That's really but commendable, dude. But, you know, that's just one aspect. Those guys that were down there, I'm telling you, they were, it was absolutely heroic. And, you know, I'm oh. still good friends with, actually, uh, one of the guys, just because he's still active duty, I don't want to say his name, but, uh, yeah, I just I just went to his wedding uh, here in Ohio, uh, his wedding reception, I should say, because I couldn't make it to the wedding a yeah. few few weeks ago, or a few months ago. So we're no still kidding. connected to this day. Yeah. Oh, still really good friends. Who was the uh, guy that, uh, that you can say, who was the other guy? Uh, Ray Plaster. Plaster. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, two, two really good Rangers doing what Rangers do, right? Yeah. Like overwhelming odds, put effective fire on the enemy, you know, shoot, move and communicate. That's what they were doing, man. Yeah. It was awesome. I mean, there's a reason why those OGA guys wanted us with them because no, there. I don't know any of their background. It was kind of hit and miss. I don't want to say. I don't know who they were. Nobody kind of really knew who they were, but they knew that if you put those type of guys with them, yep. if yep. the if you get into some sort of scrape, you're going to have guys that know what they're doing. Because and here's what people forget. I don't know if they forget it, but maybe sometimes I forget it. But those guys came from somewhere, right? We look at these these recce dudes as like, uh, you know, they're really squared away. They got all these badges. They've done all this stuff. But they all came from battalion, yes. right? They all came yep. from a company or a squad. They were all rangers. They were all a PFC and battalion and uh, were grown to be just the baddest of asses, you know? So, like, yeah. once they get to that, that recce level, they're, like, they, they are – I would they're comparable to any elite unit in a, around, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yep. So, yeah, you get two guys like that who – you know, the other, their job is to take pictures or report back, you know, or whatever. But when it comes down to it, they know how to fight, too. I mean, that's that's one thing about that that whole detachment of the whole company now um, that I really loved was that they they were fighters first. You know, they, they knew how to do all that stuff. So, you, yeah. you know, you know, you know, J.D., I th this is one of those stories that just like yeah, uh, to, to as a testament to the Rangers and the fact that they that it's mission first. Right. Rangers yeah. lead the way. For sure. I don't even know what deployment it was, but I remember we were on a deployment and we had squirters off the X and they had an air QRF, which was a CH 47. And it yeah. had, it had a small Ranger squad. And I remember they, they directed that aircraft to cut off the squirters. And we didn't find this out until later, but I remember watching that QRF bird come in, in the distance about maybe a click for me. And I just remember seeing these, black dots coming out the back of the aircraft. And I'm like, I, that, what am I seeing? I don't even know what I'm seeing. <laughs> we found out after the mission that the aircraft could not touch down. So it was hovering about 10 feet off the ground. So the, the squad leader and the first two guys thought they were stepping onto the ground. Oh my God. They were actually falling out of the back of the aircraft. Oh my God. The look, by the time the loadmaster realized what was going, he stopped the last guy, which is a private. And he was like a saw or a 240 gunner. Yeah. And he said, dude, we're not on the ground. And the private said, I know, but I got to follow my squad. And the dude jumped off the back of the aircraft. 
I mean, if you think 10 feet, <laughs> it, it, like that doesn't seem like a lot of, but that's a long way down, especially when like you were like, yeah. like when you got a bunch of kit on, like kind of like what you had when you broke your back, yeah. I mean, jumping down with like a, you know, you may have, you know, a heavy machine gun or whatever, a radio on your back or body armor. That 10 feet is a long way, especially coming down from a helicopter where you don't know what's what's down there. And of yeah. course that kid would be like, you know, I got to go. I have to go. Yeah. He's like, dude, I'm go I'm following my squad. Like I, if I break a leg or die, who cares? Right. And that right. kid just, he just jumped off. But, but at the time I didn't know the five black dots I was watching was five guys just jumping out of the back of an aircraft that hadn't touched the ground. But all they know is they got to get on the ground and interdict the squirter. Uh, and I think, I think some dude did break his ankle. I think that was like the most serious injury there, but it's just, it's amazing, right? Like Rangers, yeah. I, we were so fortunate to get to be with those guys. For sure. I, 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 I always felt so safe and secure and comfortable. And I knew no matter what happened to me, those guys would die trying to, trying to get to me. Yeah. You, know, you look at Roberts Ridge and you look at, there's just tons of examples of Rangers will do whatever it takes to mm -hmm. make sure the last man makes it home.